Good morning. Welcome to my portion of the webinar. This morning we'll be speaking to 911 call taker and dispatcher stress, a study in the state of California. Thank you to our hosts, the International Critical Control Rooms Alliance. My name is Kimberly Turner and I'm the Communications Manager for the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department located in Southern California. San Bernardino County is the largest county in the contiguous U.S., encompassing over 20,000 square miles. We have two dispatch centers with approximately 160 dispatchers. Prior to becoming communications manager, I enjoyed a wonderful career as a police officer for the city of Inglewood, where I worked a variety of assignments, including field training officer and sex crimes and child abuse detective. Needless to say, I thought I had an understanding of stress, but I truly did not. And though it's widely recognized that law enforcement officials experience stressful situations on many occasions throughout the workday, as they respond to emergencies or ensure public safety, come face to face with potentially dangerous criminals, police officers must stay in defense mode throughout the workday to keep themselves safe, which initiates the great potential for prolonged stress. The amount of stress experienced in such situations ultimately depends on the officer and the balance between available resources, work demands, environmental constraints, and their ability to maintain an equilibrium between it all. Stress has been declared the health epidemic of the 21st century by the World Health Organization. As a communications manager, I look at this and I wonder, how is this affecting my staff? As a former police officer, I can validate that stress adversely affected myself and many of my peers. With the understanding that both physical and mental health issues may arise with such a great deal of stress, the state of California grants additional medical um, benefits to police officers that extend coverage because of the exposure to stress and presumptive illness such as cardiovascular disease, depression, high blood pressure, or other chronic illness, such as certain cancers. In 2012, um, the, I conducted a pilot study in coordination with San Jose State Universities in the fulfillment of my advanced degree in justice studies. The pilots, this thesis, my thesis work served as a pilot for the um, stress study. There are 87 respondents um, with a 98% completion rate and San Jose is the 10th largest city in the country and the third largest city in the state of California. So it was a robust uh, population pool for this type of initial pilot study. Uh, San Jose also takes over a million calls uh, into their 911 um, dispatch center or primary public safety answering point. The key results of the pilot study revealed that work-life balance was highly correlated uh, to self-reported stress, perceived stress, and those that found a balance between work and life reported less stress. In addition, the sat satisfaction of life was also significantly correlated and that those that were more pleased with the decisions they had made uh, at that point up until that point in their life reported uh, lower stress outcomes. High priority events or critical incidents were also correlated highly correlated with stress and I believe that's somewhat intuitive given the nature of our work but it was validated here. Workplace fairness also played a role and this was actually surprising and that those that were call takers felt inequity when compared to their dispatcher counterparts so it was a very interesting organizational uh, reveal that correlated to stress in April of this year of 2017 we were able to conduct a statewide study um, of 911 dispatchers California is the largest state by population in the U.S. with over 39 million residents. There are 454 primary public safety answering points. 
a total dispatcher population of 7,000 and which as you can see on the surface provides uh, opportunity to conduct very robust uh, research. There were over 800 respondents over a seven day period and the project was uh, facilitated by Dr. Michelle Lilly of Northern Illinois University. You may be familiar with Dr. Lilly's work in 2012 she and Heather Pierce um, published a groundbreaking study that linked the correlations of PT, PTSD symptomology with the dispatcher pool. And uh, that study was conducted by in the Midwest. Also, Dr. Anna Gamaz and Ms. Cassandra Kessler of Cal Baptist University are part of the research team. The instrument took a look at was an online survey, the pool our respondents were 911 call takers, dispatchers, and supervisors. The instrument including perceived stress scale, depression and anxiety stress scale, and mental health uh, outcomes. The instrument also included physical uh, health outcomes, workplace attitudes. Given the pilot, this was an important category to explore. Work conditions, the nature of calls received, and in this case, we didn't just look at critical incidents or high priority events, we also looked at what we would consider to be non-priority events, such as nuisance calls, uh, maybe neighbors uh, in a nuisance call, a parking complaint, a dog barking, or an accidental call to 911 on a cell phone or mobile device. There, were, there was also a burnout inventory, and our demographics consisted of gender, income, uh, self-reported ethnicity, marital status, as well as educational level. The respondents, there were 833 completed surveys, and it was divided nearly equally between Southern California and Northern California with Central California having the smallest number of respondents. There were about 82% women and 18% men, which is consistent with uh, what we, our dispatch population. There, when you look at the PSAP ratio and the number of dispatches per center, the majority were less than 20, they had less than 20 budgeted dispatch positions. The preliminary findings revealed that burnout was the most uh, highly correlated across the variables. And burnout, a simple definition is emotional exhaustion, cynicism, diminished feelings of personal accomplishment. And it's consistent with the pilot study reporting at San Jose that this is something that is experienced by dispatchers across the state. But as a manager, I would like to know what does that look like in the control room? It manifests itself as a lack of empathy, a lack of empathy towards callers. And honestly, we normally don't deal with this until it becomes a complaint or a problem or procedural error, not because we're are consciously observing uh, symptomology consistent with burnout. It appears as exhaustion, skepticism toward the caller, where we become the gatekeeper and we judge who is worthy or not worthy of service. Again, this could be problematic because I'm sure it does not fit most of our customer service models. A feelings of dissatisfaction related to job goals this is difficult in the sense that in most organizations, dispatchers do not have a career pathway or promotability. And they are expected to do the same job tasks with the same enthusiasm and proficiency year after year, day after day, and that becomes difficult. The results of burnout are that our employees, they miss work. They call in sick or they do an inordinate amount of shift trades, or exhaust leave times, you know, vacation or holiday is very important. But when our tenured employees 
do not have time uh, available to use, have exhausted their leave balances. It should be alarming to us as managers as it is often indicative of other problems, basically burnout. So as a manager, we needed to have a perspective and, and start answering some very hard questions. And how do we address burnout? How do we address the stressors? Some of the organizational responses we may want to consider are inviting our dispatchers to critical incident debriefing um, with the sworn staff members. Many dispatchers anecdotally report that they have a lack of closure for events or don't feel a part of the team. If the data suggests that there is a divide between call takers and dispatchers in terms of workplace fairness, the question now remains whether that divide extends towards uh, civilian staff or dispatchers and call takers on our sworn personnel. As sworn personnel often participate a critical incident debriefing and may or may not be available to our call takers or dispatchers. Having a transparency in operations. Um, what that means as a manager is actually um, being transparent in our decision making processes or even going a step further and having problem solving work groups in our workplace that are based on classification levels where there are peers of equal rank, um, identifying organizational issues or trends and creating solutions. Training, training is vital. We are in the life and death business and often training is the first um, thing we abandon when we have budgetary issues, staffing issues, but it's crucially, it's vitally important. And understanding what your agency resources are. Um, how do you take advantage of them? How do you find them? And how do you match your employees to those resources? Critical incident debriefing is the first nugget of uh, sort of formulating an action plan for your department, prioritizing dispatcher staff participation, and partnering with agency clinicians or trained chaplaincy to facilitate debriefings and making it a consistent practice, not a one-off situation. The transparency in, op in operations is absolutely a top-down approach where the information flows from the top down. Having an explanation of operational decisions, explaining the why is very important. It's important to dispatchers, but it's particularly important when we have a multi-generational uh, work group. Creating a feedback loop or mechanism where employees know that they are heard and that there's feedback. Even if the answer is no, it's okay we actually need to explain the no. Having equity in policies and application of policies and procedures, being aware of our own internal biases so that we are able to make equitable decisions in, in our policy making and then the application of our policies and rules that we are going to enforce. It doesn't mean we're bad people. It just means we're good people trying to do the right thing. Creating problem-solving work groups where we have, they are interest-based. In other words, as a dispatcher or call taker, I'm able to observe an organizational um, process and as a subject matter expert in my job tasks, I could create better solutions or more efficient solutions um, that's peer-based. Organizational operational issues, again, the key here is that you're empowering your staff to help make the best decisions for your agency and you work in partnership with management to accomplish those things. Training begins with wellness training. If the data indicates that burnout is significantly correlated across the state, we can say that it's not an agency specific issue such as San Jose is a pilot study and that we need to spend time training our staff 
and wellness and resiliency so that they can be empowered and healthy, mentally healthy. In addition to wellness and, and resiliency training, critical thinking, tra critical thinking training is important. Our staff is paid to make discretionary decisions based around a set of policy and training and cultural norms. Our job is cognitive and empowering your employees to think critically through stressful situations will help them actually manage stress better. And understanding how we have we identify controllable or uncontrollable stress factors will absolutely translate into whether our employees are healthy and resilient. Understanding what agency resources are available to us, employee assistant programs or peer support programs. Crisis intervention teams. San Bernardino County enjoys a reputation of having a very robust and effective crisis uh, intervention team. Peer support is also a priority. Um, time and taking a look at time off procedures. Um, is there such a thing as a mental health day? I think there is, although it may not be an official day. But take a look at our time off procedures and whether we're actually allowing our employees an opportunity uh, to be healthy. And having an awareness, an awareness of your staff. What is normal? What is not normal? Are there manifestations of behavior that have you concerned that the employee is burned out? Well, if there are, understanding what your agency resources are, what your policies and procedures are, and what latitude you have as a manager or as a peer to help them. The good news is in 2018, we will conduct the study again, but this time fire dispatchers will also be included. My contact information is below. Feel free to email me. I know that the webinar information will be available through ICRA and please be sure to visit iccraonline.com and Hopefully you'll register for Congress and I will see you in December.